Hi, and welcome to Michigan State University Tollgate Farm. So I'm here at a very special place on the farm. It's our beech maple forest. We call it the sugar bush. This is a place where we tap maple trees to collect sap and make maple syrup. At Tollgate, we like to think like scientists and solve mysteries. And today's mysteries are why and when does the sap flow in the trees? And how can we tell which trees are maple to begin with? And then how do we get the sap from the trees? So today, you'll be able to meet Farmer Roy, who will show you how to identify maple trees based on their unique characteristics, how to understand why trees make sap, and why we especially use sugar maples. And most importantly, you'll learn how to tap a tree. Hi. I'm Roy Prentice. I'm the uh, farm manager of the Michigan State University Colgate Education Center and Farm. We're located in Novi, Michigan. And we're going to learn about how to tap trees. This is a very interesting time of year in the woods. Things haven't really started growing in the fields yet, but it's still time to get out and do some farming. So what we're doing this time of year, and typically this is the end of February, March, maybe the first part in April, is that the uh, trees are just starting to wake up and prepare for growing in, for the growing season. And one of the pieces they do uh, as part of that is they take uh, sap, uh, sugars, that they've accumulated in the roots from last fall, and they start moving those uh, sugars up to the buds in preparation for feeding the leaves as the leaves expand. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to catch some of that uh, sap that's flowing from the roots to the top of the tree. It has a small amount of sugar in the sap, about 2%, and uh, we're going to take that sap out of the tree and then refine it. And by refining, all we're going to be doing is boiling off water, concentrating the sugars from 2% up to maple syrup, which is 66 to 67 percent sugar and uh and then that's maple syrup so the only difference between the sap we collect and maple syrup is boiling off water there's some other pieces to the process we do some filtering and whatnot but the nub is just that boiling so when we come out to the woods the first thing we really need to figure out is which are the sugar maples and we pick on sugar maples because we get that sap flow in the spring and it has relatively high sugar content, but there's also a lot of them. Primarily, our first clue is uh, we're looking for trees that have an opposite branching habit. So we're looking for uh, the, the branch comes up and then side branches come out uh, opposite to... Uh... So in this case, uh, we can see that we have an opposite branching. The, the side branches come out opposite each other versus an alternate branching habit. If you happen to be in the uh, Tollgate Woods, there is an additional identification uh, technique that you can use. You can look for the trees that have paint on them. So I went through and I picked out all the maples and the ones that are close to the path that we frequently tap, we uh, marked with this distinctive paint. So, so here we are in the woods. Uh, it is the time of year when we're going to do, be doing some tapping. Uh, tree tapping, maple syrup tapping, is something that we do every year. It doesn't hurt the tree, and so it's a very sustainable crop. Tap the tree this year, I want to be away from where it was tapped before. Because inside the tree, uh, it senses that wound of a previous year's tapping. It kind of makes a little guard area around that, and we won't get good sap flow if we tap an area that's been tapped previously. So I've identified where I'm going to tap it. I have my uh, 5 16 inch drill. Usually I don't start tapping until uh, the trees are 12 inches so that we can see what I'm doing. I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going in about that far. So I'm only going in about an inch and a half uh, and I'm actually getting some sap flow right now, which is very cool. We try to keep that tap hole uh, clean and so we buy these new uh, adapters every year and you can maybe you can see it flowing out here i'm going to put the adapter in and i think it'll be a little more obvious i'm just going to tap that in to make a good seal and the sap's flowing 
and you can see it's dripping out of there right now. Sap flows really well when we get below freezing temperatures at night and above freezing temperatures during the day. So during that time period, uh, February, March, April, you won't get one solid flow. You'll get two or three days when the weather's just right and it really can flow out and then it'll quit for a while. And then it'll come back and it'll flow again. So yeah, weather is very key, just like with all farming, in having a good syrup run. So I've got uh, my um, tree saver adapter in, and then I'm gonna uh, put a spile in, and this is the piece that actually is connected to the tubing. So we're gonna put a spile in and just tap that in, make a good seal again. And then we're going to have a bucket that we're gonna collect our sap in. And so we're just gonna run that down into the bucket. And I've got a hole in the side of the bucket to hold the tubing. And we'll put a lid on. Uh, and the lid is just keeping leaves and other uh, material from getting in the bucket. And we'll come back tomorrow and there should be a gallon, two gallons, maybe three gallons of sap in there. And we can take that sap and we'll take it to the sugar shack and we'll put it in the evaporator and we'll boil it down. When we uh, collect the sap, it's quite clear, and if you were to taste it, it tastes maybe a little bit sweet, if you use your imagination, but 2% sugar is about at the edge of what we can sense as a sweetness. And as we're, after we run it through the evaporator, then uh, you're concentrating the sugars, 66, 67% sugar. You're also, by cooking those sugars, you're caramelizing them, and so that's where we get this dark color. So before our next session where we'll learn about evaporation in the sugar shack with farmer Roy. I'm here today with Lucy and Max and we're going to try our hand at tapping the tree. But first we need to identify a maple tree and farmer Roy helped us with that. We were looking at three things. We were looking at leaves. So Max and Lucy, could we identify a tree by its leaves right now? No! No, <laughs> no way! It's winter and there are no leaves on the trees. But we can identify it by tree. the bark. And then also something that we bark. learned from Farmer Roy is opposite branching. So yes. Lucy, can you point right here on this seed, little seedling of a tree? Yes, look at the one behind you. Yeah, so this one behind us, you can see the branches are coming off of the lower branch opposite each other. Can you each put your arms out your side? Guess what, you're opposite branched. <laughs> And so, yes, this is a maple tree, but before we tap, remember Farmer Roy said it has to be a certain diameter. So we are going to see if this tree is big enough to tap. 12 inches, good Lucy, you got it. So I'm going to ask you guys, maybe foot. just max right from here Which and check foot. to see 12 inches is a foot. That's right. That's way more than 12 inches. Way more than 12 inches, so no worries, right? So we're going to go ahead and tap this tree using some special tools. Some of the tools, and Farmer Roy showed, are of course the drill. We're also going to use what Lucy has there. Can you it's, hold that up? It's a mallet? It's a mallet! Very good! All right, next we're ready to tap this tree. We're going to use this drill at a 90 degree angle to the tree, perpendicular to the tree. Parallel to the ground, as Lucy says. Are you ready? Nicely done. Well done. All right, Lucy, do you want to come on over? Sure. You bring the mallet over. So we're going to take this little adapter. Helps make a, a nice seal. We'll place it in the hole. And then we're going to take the mallet. I'll step out of your way, Lucy. And you're going to do taps. You can do one, two, three taps, and then we'll see. Often, how about before you start, it will make a really nice tapping noise. And then when it sets in the tree, it makes kind of a thud sound. So go ahead. Good job. Well done. So that is set. I thought I heard a thud too. Let me do a double check. Oh, I heard that tap, 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 thud. Good job. All right. Yeah, Max, would you like a turn? Sure. Okay. Let it come on over here. Oh, did you hear that? It went tap, 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 thud. 
Good job. You've put that in there. I'll just uh, do a double chuck. Yep, there we go. Nicely done. Our last step would be to go ahead and take this tube, put it into a hole and into the bucket, and then the sap would be collected and travel down with gravity into the bucket as we collect the sap. Thank you for joining us at Michigan State University Tollgate Farm to explore the special process of tapping trees to make one of Michigan's most important agricultural crops, maple syrup.